Almost every day, WikiLeaks has been releasing another batch of several hundred to several thousand emails. There is so much, we have a team of producers to go through each email looking for news. Tonight, we're trying to give you a sense of the highlights so far. Not only what has been most covered, which is who's behind the attack or believed to be behind the hack, but also the substance of what's inside these emails. A deep dive into the WikiLeaks releases. What's happening and why? And where are we right now? Here's Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry. The United States strongly condemns the illegal disclosure of classified information. It was six years ago next month when a titanic clash started between one of the most powerful women in the world, Hillary Clinton, and a man who is the previously little known founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. She should resign uh, if it can be shown that she was responsible. He rattled the American Secretary of State in November of 2010 by leaking out 250,000 classified diplomatic cables. It puts people's lives in danger, threatens our national security. And now Assange may be threatening no less than Clinton's path to the Oval Office from the most unlikely of places, Assange's tiny bedroom at the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, from which he has now directed the theft and release of more than 10,000 emails from the personal account of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. The stuff she says. Those emails is disqualifying for being president of the United States. There's a public Hillary and a private Hillary. But don't just take it from Rudy Giuliani. In one email, Clinton herself used a paid Wall Street speech to explain away her flip flop on the Trans Pacific Partnership trade deal by saying, quote, If everybody's watching, you know, all of the backroom discussions and the deals, you know, then people get a little nervous, to say the least. So you need both a public and a private position. Beyond top aides like Podesta and Jennifer Palmieri using email exchanges to trash various blocks of voters, from Catholics and Hispanics to African American leaders and Southerners, perhaps the most jarring part is that the most savage criticism of Clinton is coming not from conservatives, but insiders like Joel Benenson, who fires off an email asking what the candidate actually believes and wants as her core message, while outside advisor Neera Tandon seemed despondent about the email scandal, declaring that apologizing was Clinton. Achilles heel, writing to Podesta in late August 2015, quote, her inability to just do a national interview and communicate genuine feelings of remorse and regret is now, I fear, becoming a character problem, more so than honesty. The emails have also not been a good look for President Obama, who's been aggressively campaigning for Clinton to succeed him. That's why I believe that she is more qualified to be president of the United States of America. In a March 4, 2015 email, one day after Republican Trey Gowdy issued a subpoena for Clinton's emails to be preserved, and just weeks before thousands of them were deleted with bleach bit, Podesta writes to top Clinton aide Cheryl Mills in a note marked special category, quote, think we should hold emails to and from POTUS? Even though Clinton vowed repeatedly all work-related emails were turned over, and the president had said he didn't really email with her. Did you know about Hillary's Clinton use of a private, private email server? No. While she was Secretary of State? No. Last December, after the San Bernardino massacre that left 14 people dead, Podesta sent an email suggesting it would be better for the campaign if a non-Muslim had led the terror attack. After a Clinton aide noted that MSNBC host Christopher Hayes had tweeted the name of the suspect, Saeed Farouk, staffer Karen Finney wrote, damn, while Podesta responded, better if a guy named Saeed Farouk was reporting that a guy named Christopher Hayes was the shooter. In the battle against ISIS, Clinton herself sent Podesta a shocking email taking aim at two U.S. allies. Clinton writing in 2014, the U.S. government needed to, quote, bring pressure on the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which are providing clandestine financial and logistic support to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. Yet when it comes to Qatar, the WikiLeaks dumps also show that two years earlier, Bill Clinton had no trouble accepting big money from that same country for the Clinton Foundation. An email showing officials from Qatar, quote, would like to see WJC for five minutes in New York to present $1 million check that Qatar promised for the former president's birthday in 2011. Another leaked email reveals a prominent law firm was quietly brought in to audit the foundation and found, quote, some interviewees reported conflicts of those raising funds or donors, some of whom may have an expectation of quid pro quo benefits in return for gifts. 
That review sparked by a dispute between Chelsea Clinton and insider Doug Band. Band writing to Podesta and Mills, as they say, the apple doesn't fall far. A kiss on the cheek while she is sticking a knife in the back and front. If Clinton's paid speech transcripts had leaked out during the heated Democratic primary, Senator Bernie Sanders may have been able to take the nomination by proving Clinton's coziness with Wall Street. But if it is such a great speech, the secretary should share it with the whole world. While the Clinton camp has not denied the authenticity of the emails, they are lashing out. They're part of an effort by both Russia and WikiLeaks, and neither of those are kind of neutral transmitters of information. You can't just automatically assume that everything is on the up and up with these emails. A sign Assange has gotten the attention he wanted, despite being ridiculed earlier this month for making this promise. Our upcoming publication is significant in relation to the U.S. election. Yeah, we think they're, we think they're significant. Now, Assange says Ecuador cut off his Internet access, but WikiLeaks is back up. Released 3,000 more emails today. One has campaign manager Robbie Mook so confused about Clinton's flip-flops, he asked Podesta where they exactly landed on trade. And political reporter Glenn Thrush wrote a story and then wrote Podesta, quote, Because I have become a hack, I will send you the whole section that pertains to you. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. Brett? Got to watch what you put in emails. Ed, thank you.